Okay. And just uh, let me know as people come on and when I should start. Usually we wait till there's a, a few people. Hey everyone, we're just waiting for some more people to join. Um, but uh, welcome to Cook for Love's Easter candy demo. I'm really excited that you guys were able to join us today. Um, it looks like we're going to have a good turnout, which is very cool. Um, while we are waiting for people to join, if there's anyone on now, you can uh, take your graham crackers um, and make graham cracker crumbs. So you can either put them in a Ziploc bag and, and pound them, or you can put them in the food processor, uh, whatever you'd like. Save a few graham crackers, though, because we're going to make some s'more candy eggs. So um, what... Okay. We're back on? Okay. Hi, everyone. We got lost there for a second. Um, <laughs> but uh, welcome to Cook for Love's Easter uh, candy demo. Um, we're going to wait a few minutes for more people to uh, hop on the call. But um, if you are waiting, uh, you can take your graham crackers. What we're looking for for our peanut butter cups uh, recipe is a half a cup of um, graham crackers, which is 60 grams, which is about, uh, I would say it's probably six of the two and a half inch squares. So you just want to put those in the food processor or just put them in a Ziploc bag and just kind of beat them with a, a rolling pin so they're nice and crumbly. Uh, they're going to add a little bit of texture to our peanut butter cups. Uh, but save a few uh, crackers because we're going to use those in another candy recipe when we make uh, some s'more eggs. Um, and just so you know, I have Nikki uh, in my ears, so she's, she is, um, if you have any questions, you can type them on and she'll let me know what they are and we'll answer as soon as we have a little bit of a break. And Michael's also on the call um, and he's helping us uh, avoid any technical difficulties. How many people do we have on, Nikki? Okay, so then I think maybe we should just start. Um, so everyone, if you want to just pour yourself a glass of wine or whatever it is that you're drinking, this is going to be a very, very relaxed class. All we're really doing is making some nice fillings and dipping things in chocolate. No stress here. Whatever you don't have, um, anything dipped in chocolate is delicious, so it will all be fine. Um, we are going to start with melting some chocolate. Um, I personally love... Uh, candy wafers, the make and mold ones, they are the same, let me just switch camera angles, um, they are pretty much the same amount of protein um, and fee as almond bark, but it's much less sweet, uh, which I like because I'm not a big uh, sugar person, so um, this is my preference and my go-to for any candies. If you have almond bark, that will work fine. Be careful though, because other candy melts from different companies, the, the protein can range from, these are 0.875 milligrams in a gram, but it can go up as high as 2.8 in like Wilton ones. So be mindful of uh, the brand that you're using. You can get these at Hobby Lobby. Um, you can get them on the Make and Mold website, but Hobby Lobby seems to always have them on sale for $1.99 and you can order them online. So if you haven't gotten them, you can order them now and they will be here in time for Easter. Um, the other thing that I like to do um, if I need to lower the fee or I want it even less sweet is I add a little bit of carob chips to them. I'm not a fan of carob on its own, but mixed in with the wafers, I think it's very, very nice and um, carob are about, I think it's 0.6 milligrams per gram. So again, it will lower the protein a little bit um, and lower the feed count a little bit. But uh, if I added one of these chips to a whole bowl, my daughter would know and she wouldn't like them. So this is what I would do if I was having it for myself, but that's if you don't like things as sweet. So what I'm gonna do is we've got the bowl of uh, candy wafers, Sure, I'm just going to turn down my volume. Okay. 
Okay, let me know if that's better. Nikki's just letting me know that the volume is a little high. So, okay, so these are candy wafers. Um, I'm going to do, I don't have a microwave. If you have a microwave, you can put them on like a medium, uh, the medium power and do it for 30 seconds, mix it up and then do it for another 30 seconds and keep going until it melts. But what we're gonna do instead here is do what's called a double boiler method. And all that means is on our stove top, we're gonna put um, some hot water in a pan. We're gonna put it on low and then we're going to let the, the candies melt, okay? So I'm gonna go over to the stove top. Let me switch camera angles. So there's my pan. I'm putting some hot water in it. I'm putting the bowl of candy wafers inside and I'm turning it on the low heat. And again, depends on your personal preference. I like a pinch of salt in there for my candy. And <coughs> I also like, which is a little unusual, and I have to find it, a little bit of instant espresso. It just really enhances the chocolate flavor. And I'm only adding about a quarter of a teaspoon. But you don't need this. It's more if you if you are like me and don't like things too sweet. Okay. So we have our candy sitting in the background, um, simmering away, and it will be melted probably within a few minutes. So now that that's going on, we're going to move on to some of our fillings. And to give you an idea. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, hang on one second. Uh, the question was just asked. Um, right now, I'm just putting on one bag of chocolate, yes. Um, and we will, that's, that's going on in the background now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our filling for um, the peanut butter cup uh, eggs, and then we're gonna move on to peppermint patties because they have to be refrigerated. So that way they can be in the fridge while we're making the rest of the stuff. So. Reese's peanut butter eggs are always very, very popular, um, very, very popular candy. So I wanted to try to come up with something that would be similar. So I'm going to use some Biscoff. Um, if you have a higher tolerance, now Biscoff, as you know, is, is, is fairly sweet. Um, if you have a higher tolerance, you can use uh, no nut butter. Um, it's a little too high for us, so we don't use it. But this one is much less sweet. You can use either one. So I have my KitchenAid mixer out and I'm going to add the butter. There's four tablespoons of butter. Okay. And I'm going to put that on. Okay. And I just want that to get a little soft. sugar and that's powdered sugar and it's one cup of powdered sugar I'm turn that back on pardon the noise There was a question asked as to whether or not the recipes are going to be on Cook for Love. They are all up on the site. So this one that we're making right now is called the Peanut Butter Eggs. Um, we are also going to be making peppermint patties and Easter cream eggs, Kit Kats, and Twix treats today. And then we're just going to have fun at the end and do a whole bunch of different candy options. Okay. Again, in here so far, we have four tablespoons of butter and we have one cup of sugar. So I'm just going to get my hands in there 
and I'm just going to blend some of that butter into the sugar and just to speed it up a little bit. There's a lot of sugar in here and not a lot of butter, so it's not creaming the way that, same way it would, a cookie would. It's more crumbly. But once you add that bisque off in, it will blend. So in here, we're going to add a half a cup of bisque off right in the bowl. And I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla. So it is a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And with all candies, a tiny bit of salt really makes a difference. So it's just a pinch of salt. And we're gonna go again. Sorry for the noise. question was asked whether or not the butter was cold or room temperature. It's kind of, um, it, it's room temperature. It's been sitting out for a little bit because we want it to blend in with the, um, with the powdered sugar and with the Biscoff. So we want it more of a room temperature. adding in a half a cup or 60 grams of the Cook for Love graham crackers that have been crumbled up um, in the food processor earlier. And that's just going to add a little bit of texture. If you don't have the graham crackers, you don't have time to make them, this will still be nice with it. This just adds a little extra layer of uh, texture. take out that mix and you know how we normally sprinkle wheat starch when we're going to roll something out we don't want that taste on here so instead we're going to dust the area with a little bit of powdered sugar so a little bit of powdered sugar powdered sugar Now my mix, I don't know about yours, but mine is still pretty crumbly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on this powdered sugar um, work area. And I'm going to give it a few kneads and it will all come together.
Nikki, if there are any questions, now's a good time to read them. <laughs> uh, someone just said they like my haircut. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So it's kind of dry, the mix. And that's okay. What I'm going to do, um, so this is going to make 24 Easter eggs of this size. And it will make probably three times that amount for a small one. So it all depends on what size you want them to be. That's a lot for me to have. Um, so I'm going to take half of the dough and I'm going to use it for something else later on uh, when we're doing a little bit of uh, a little bit of playing. And just having a little more fun. So I'm taking half mine out. You can, if you want 24 of these, then keep all of them. Um, but if you want to use it for something else later to have more variety, take half of it out. Okay. Um, do you know, someone just asked the question whether cha-chas were lower in protein. Um, do you know what, Nikki, do you mind looking that up and how much fee? I'm not sure. I, I don't think the cha-chas are lower than almond bark, but I could be wrong. And this is as low as almond bark. And a lot cheaper. dough there. Okay, so Nikki was kind enough to look that uh, look up the fee in cha chas while we were on this. Um, I'm sorry, you said 25 grams was, say it again one, one more time, Nikki. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 24 grams of the cha-chas is 20 fee. And that would be how many milligrams per gram? It sounds like it's a, it's a, probably about the same as the make and mold, right? Yeah, so it's 0.83 and make and mold is 0.875 and almond bark is between 0.8 and 0.88, depending on the brand. So, um, you know, if you get coverage, by all means, get cha-chas from Cambrook. But if you don't, it's much cheaper just to, to order them or to get them at your local Hobby Lobby or craft store. So this is firm enough that I'm actually just cutting out the shapes now. And then we're going to put them in the fridge so that they're nice and cold. Or you can stick them in the freezer, whichever you prefer. Either one will be fine. And I'm using an egg shape just because traditionally that's what the Reese's Easter candy is. Um, you can, of course, use this filling in and make little, if you have the molds, you could make little Reese's peanut butter cups um, or Reese's, not Reese's peanut butter cups, I guess it would be Biscoff butter cups. Um, so, do that. So someone just asked the question um, if they um, don't feel like making cook for graham crackers. Totally understandable. Um, do you, is there an alternative? If you have a higher tolerance, um, you can certainly uh, use regular graham crackers um, or gluten-free graham crackers, depending on where you are um, in terms of your protein allowance. Um, you could, what you're looking for is just like a little bit of a, it's more of a mouthfeel thing. They'll, they will be delicious without it. So I would say um, if your tolerance isn't high enough to allow for gluten-free or regular graham crackers, then just omit it um, and, and it will still be delicious. But if your tolerance does allow for it, then by all means, take a shortcut. Um, we're also going to be using graham crackers later for making s'mores eggs, um, but we're going to make, be making quite a variety of candy. So you, you don't need to make these things if you don't want to or you don't have a dough in your freezer. Okay. So if you look here, I have lots of leftover dough. From cutting them out, I'm just going to squeeze it together. And what I've done for you on the website is um, the exact protein and milligrams per gram for the filling. 
um, is listed in the notes. So depending on the size that you make, depending on the size of your cookie cutter. Um, and if you don't have a cookie cutter, by the way, you could just pinch off a piece and you could just shape it into an egg shape and you'll be fine. It's, it's totally doable that way as well. So I'm gonna re-roll out my scraps. And with those, I'm going to make the smaller eggs. Anybody have any other questions while I'm doing this? It's a good time to ask. Again, taking the scraps, mushing them together, being lazy and just pressing down with my hand instead of even taking out the rolling pin. Someone asked the question, um, how am I doing this so fast? Because I'm up to my ears in candy at this point because uh, typical me, um, I was inventing the recipes this week. So, <laughs> so I just remember how to do it. <laughs> and I was doing it yesterday and the day before. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take these candies and I'm just gonna put them on a baking sheet or something that's nice and flat and I'm gonna put them in my fridge. Um, if you have space in your freezer, you can put them in your freezer as well. You just want them to be cold because when we dip them in the warm chocolate, um, we don't want the shape to get all mushy. But the fridge is fine. Um, someone had mentioned that when they were making theirs, it was wetter clearly than mine was, um, and it was sticking to the rolling pin. That's what you're going to do more and more powdered sugar. So just the way that you would if uh, something like a, a dough was sticking to your pin and you use wheat starch, you're gonna use powdered sugar. You can just keep dusting the area. Um, and if it's, if it's too sticky, you can also just put it in the fridge for a half hour and then it'll be much easier to roll out. Whichever works for you. So I'm gonna... Um, someone asked if they don't have a stand mixer, can they still make this? Absolutely. Um, all you need to do, regular hand mixer would work. Um, or you can just use your fingers, to be honest with you. You can just sit there and kind of, um, let me just, you can just with your hands pinch together the butter and the sugar until it's all blended and then mix in the, with the hand, by your hand with the, the Biscoff and everything else. It will be fine without a mixer. I just have one, so it's just easier for me to use it. Um, okay. So I'm going to slide these on a cutting board and I'm going to put it in the fridge and we're going to get back to that as soon as they get a little bit hard and a little bit cold. The next question asked was whether or not you could use a pastry cutter. Absolutely. That will blend it perfectly as well. So now I'm going to move this KitchenAid. We're going to use it again for another recipe. Again, you don't need it if you don't have it, but I'm going to use a food processor for this next one. Okay. All right. So let me clean off this area a little bit. There we go. And let's go check on our chocolates. So let's see. Get a spoon. So that chocolate is all melted, which is perfect. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the heat, but I'm going to keep it sitting in the warm water. 
and that should keep it melted. So if you look here, you can see there are still some of the wafers that aren't fully melted, but once they stir it, they will melt. And the other thing that I do to make the chocolate a little bit more dippable is I add a tiny bit of a neutral oil. So you could use vegetable oil, you could use coconut oil, and you're using about, in the whole bag, about half a teaspoon. And that's just gonna make the chocolate coat a little bit more evenly. Okay, let that sit. Okay, next up, we are gonna do, the next recipe that we're going to do is the peppermint patties. Um, just because again, that's another one that needs to go in the fridge. So we want all of those waiting for us. So we are ready to do the next um, peppermint patties. So for the peppermint patties, we are going to do just two tablespoons of butter and we have one and a half cups of powdered sugar. So that's gonna go right into the food processor or a bowl. Um, if you're doing a bowl, you can use the pastry cutter. I realize you have to clean it off after using it for the Biscoff, sorry. <laughs> it's gonna go in. And we're gonna just add a pinch of salt. Okay. And we're gonna pulse that. see here, let me switch over actually and do it this one. So you can see here, it's just, you can see, it's almost a little bit like a cornmeal, um, a very powdery cornmeal, but the butter's all broken up into that now and evenly distributed. We're gonna put it back in here and we are going to add a little bit of heavy cream. That's two tablespoons of heavy cream. Um, you can use a non-dairy creamer if you want to lower the protein or if you prefer not to use heavy cream, that's fine. The cream just adds a little bit of a richness. So I recommend using it if it works within your allowance. Um, and then there's a difference between peppermint oil and peppermint extract. Peppermint oil is super, super potent. Um, so you would only need a drop or two of this. Um, and peppermint extract is more like a vanilla extract type of thing. And you would use a, a full teaspoon of vanilla extract. Or not vanilla, sorry, peppermint. So we're going to pour that in. And then, okay, hang on one second. Let's go on. So again, in here was just two tablespoons of butter. It was uh, one and a half cups of powdered sugar, two tablespoons of whipped cream or heavy cream, and a teaspoon of peppermint extract and a tiny pinch of salt. for. Let's see. Let me bring this one over so you can see. Hang on. I'll bring it over closer to you. So if you look here, it's formed into a ball. Yep. It's actually very, very nice. So it's all a nice cream. And again, if I try to roll that, it's going to stick like crazy. So what I'm going to do is the same thing we did before. I'm going to take a piece of parchment or a piece of wax paper and I'm going to put some powdered sugar down. Heavy dusting. I can show you right here. So the heavy dusting of the powdered sugar. And then I'm going to scoop out all of this deliciousness. Uh, these, by the way, are the best peppermint patties I've ever had in my life. 
I ate way too many of them yesterday. And you can give a little taste and see if you want more um, extract in it. Depends on how minty you like it. I was happy with the teaspoon. Um, Rebecca just, uh, I guess, had a little taste of the peanut butter uh, filling, peanut butter, um, and said it was even better than a Reese's. I have to say, I was, I was blown away by the taste because I was expecting it maybe to be a little bit too sweet, but it really is, it's delicious. And we're going to play with some of that filling later to make like a fluffer nutter candy. Um, and then my favorite candy in the entire world is... Uh, Cadbury Star Bar. Um, I used to get it. Um, I would spend most of my summers in Ireland growing up. Um, I have a lot of relatives there, and that is always just. It probably has more to do with memories um, as well as the taste. But we're also going to make make that later when we're just kind of playing, and we're going to use that same filling for both of those. Because that's the goal is to try to use the same filling for a few different things to make life a little bit easier whenever we can. Okay. You can see here, I've got a big mound, and honestly, if I tried to roll that, it would be a sticky mess. So I am just going to put some powdered sugar on top, like that, and then I'm going to pat it down with my hands, and I'm going to move it a little bit so it doesn't stick too much. And I'm going to put that in the fridge. I'm not even going to try to cut them out right now. I'm going to let it sit in the fridge for about 20 minutes, and then we'll cut them out. in the fridge. Okay. And let me just wash my hands because they're all sticky. Okay. Yep. Um, so what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to be doing a little bit of jumping. The question was what recipe is going to be next. Um, so what we're going to do next is we are going to just have some of the melted chocolate and we're going to, because we're going to be doing some fillings for the cream eggs and for the s'mores eggs, what I want to do is do um, a coating of chocolate in our molds. So whatever molds you plan on using for your Easter cream eggs and for a s'mores. Um, so you want something that has uh, a decent dip in it um, so that we have enough filling. So what we're going to do is right now our plan is we're just going to uh, put about five grams of chocolate in each, of like a, a rough half teaspoon or teaspoon um, into each filling, into each cavity. We're going to put it in the fridge and then five minutes later we're going to do that again so that we have our base. And then after that we're going to melt our caramels. Then we're going to go over to Kit Kats. So we're bouncing a lot um, with recipes, and I apologize that it's not cohesive, but if, if we went from start to finish with each recipe, you would be stuck with me till very, very late tonight. So I'm trying to make use of the time when things are getting cold in the fridge and, and working that way. So, sorry. <laughs> okay. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to fill um, some of the chocolates and let them set while we make the next thing. So, um, so somebody had a question that they um, they they don't like peppermint. Um, I, I would honestly say peppermint patties probably then just aren't for you. Um, you could. We're going to be making um, when we do our Easter cream egg. We're going to be making a basic sort of buttercream that you can use in other fillings. But I think if I didn't like peppermint, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't even do that recipe. You could put vanilla extract in there, um, but I think it's going to be very, very close to our Easter cream egg. Um, and then you're just kind of making more work for yourself, where you could just use some of the Easter cream egg in, in a different filling. That would be my my vote. So if you don't like peppermint, um, yeah, I'd say just don't make that recipe, unless you've already started. Then add vanilla. <laughs> okay, we've got, 
Um, so uh, one of the questions asked was how long is, will the filling last? In the fridge it will last, it will certainly last um, a month, no problem. Um, in the freezer uh, it will last, last at least six months. Um, yeah. So I have a teaspoon here. I, I'm not, you can measure it if you would like, um, but since we have the milligrams per gram of the filling, um, we'll be able to calculate it in the end. So I'm just adding, it's half a teaspoon that I'm adding to each well. And these ones are going to be for my Cadbury cream egg. And the other one is going to be for my s'mores. So one of the things that you wanna do when you're doing this filling is gravity is of course going to pull everything to the center and you wanna make sure that the chocolate goes all the way up to the top. So you can use a silicone uh, pastry brush or you could just use a spoon and you just wanna go from the bottom and pull it up. Even if it comes out of the filling, out of the mold itself and gets on the side, that's fine. It's gonna break off once it, cool, once it sets. So it's not a problem. And again, we're gonna do two layers of this so it's okay if it doesn't completely cover everything. Um, someone asked for a gluten-free alternative to the Biscoff cookie butter. Um, honestly, I don't know. Um, I would say that peanut butter, if your tolerance happens to be higher and you can have that, that would probably work. Um, otherwise, unfortunately, you would probably have to go online and see how they make cookie butter and then substitute it with a gluten-free cookie. Sorry, I don't have a better answer than that. Nikki, can you just look to see if there is such a thing as a gluten-free uh, Biscoff cookie? I, I don't know of one. Okay. Nikki is just online, so she's going to look to see if there's there or any things that we don't know about that might be gluten free. The other cookie butters. Okay. And I haven't used this mold yet, so we'll we'll see how it works, but. Again, chocolate everywhere, painting in here. Okay, I have a feeling that this well on this mold that I just bought might be a little deeper than I want it to be, but we'll see what happens. This is my first time using the silicone molds. I have to say, um, in terms of candy, in our house, we uh, we pretty much only did candy at uh, Halloween, Valentine's Day, and then uh, the Easter Bunny would bring us some. And my daughter um, would comment and note that the Easter Bunny did a much better job than I did um, in terms of making candy. Um, that he was much more skilled um, because he took a lot more time and used different 
colored candies and did very interesting fillings. So she recommended that I reach out to him um, and maybe get a lesson. <laughs> so so uh, most of these recipes are from the Easter Bunny directly. Um, he was very kind and willing to help. And that is key. most of this is filled. Okay, I don't like this new mold I got, I'll be honest. It's, it's a bit of a pain. Definitely should have tested it before the class. All right, so I'm going to put these in the fridge for five to ten minutes, and then we're going to coat them again. Any questions? So yeah, the question was how did I come up with the recipes? Uh, Easter Bunny guided me, um, and essentially what I usually do um, if I'm coming up with a recipe on my own without the Easter Bunny's help is um, I go online first and see if there is a recipe that exists for the typical um, high protein version, and then I figure out substitutes from there. Um, that's how I do most recipes if I'm inventing them. Um, but this time, like I said, I had I had the Easter Bunny's help, which was which was very handy. So. Um, next up, we are going to, again, sorry for all the jumping, um, you're going to preheat your oven to 300 degrees, and we're going to melt our caramels for our Twix bars. So, let me find Twix. So depending upon your allowance, um, you can look to see if regular caramels work for you. They're a little too high for us. So we use the cocoa melts, which are coconut um, caramels. And I personally love the sea salt one, but you can also buy plain. So what we want to do is unwrap the candies. Chocolate back in here so it's nice and melted. Um, Unwrap the caramels. I unwrap them before the class. Now they're all stuck together. So, and we're going to put them together like that. And we're going to put them in the oven just for like four minutes, um, maybe five minutes. Uh, and they're going to melt and kind of become one big blob. And then we're going to roll them so they're a little bit thinner. And then we're going to cut out the shapes that we want. So, uh, someone asked if there's another way to melt the caramel. You could probably put it in the microwave. Um, I don't have a microwave, so I'm not sure of the time of it. I would say put it on. Again, you want it on like a parchment paper um, and put it in for on a medium power and try it for 20 seconds and then fold your paper over and then kind of press on it and see if it's melted enough. If not, open it up and put it back in for 10 second intervals until it's, it's right. So my oven is not preheated, but I'm going to put that in anyway because it, it just needs a low heat. So it's okay. So while that's melting, we're going to move on to the simplest recipe we have, which are Kit Kats. So, Nabisco sugar wafers. Do, do, do. Where are they? Uh, regular grocery store, uh, super low in fee and protein. Um, all we need to do for these is just dip them in the chocolate, and if we want to make them fancy, we can put some sprinkles on top of them. Um, if you want them to be able to sort of break the way a Kit Kat would, you can do one of two things. You can either get a, a Kit Kat mold, um, like this one that I have here. You can see it has the, the three different sections that you can break apart. Um, but then you have to trim your sugar wafer because they're fatter than this it's a little bit of a pain in the neck. So what I do if I want them to be break apart ones is before the chocolate completely hardens, 
I just push two of them together and then they'll, they'll kind of um, get stuck, almost glued together. And if you decide afterwards that you wish you had done that, just take some melted chocolate and pipe it along the side and then use it like a glue. So, here we go. Got our kick, got our sugar wafers. And we need a little bit of wax paper or parchment paper to put them on once we dip them in. Chocolate. And if you're looking to do, you know, um, a box of chocolates, you can always cut these into squares so they're smaller. Um, if you're just trying to make like a, a box that has just little bite-sized chocolates. Take my melted chocolate. Okay. Get these things out of the way. And then take two forks. Um, and all I'm going to do is drop the wafer in, push it down a little bit, flip it over, pull it out and tap it on the side. What I'm trying to do here is get rid of some excess chocolate. And then I'm gonna just slide it like that on the side of the bowl. Again, we're just letting that excess drip off. And then I'm going to gently put it down on my parchment paper. You can use parchment or wax paper. And then repeat. And that um, I'm just just thinking of that uh, the peanut butter egg filling. Those would also make very very good buckeyes. Um, I know that that's a candy that some people like, which I think you just kind of roll the. If I remember correctly, you just roll it into a ball and then you dip it into chocolate, but you leave the, a little space in the top of it so you can it, the peanut butter normally the normally peanut butter peeks out of it. But you can do that as well. So again, just a little bit of a tapping. I'm scraping to get rid of excess chocolate, more to lower the protein. This is also a great thing to have um, if you need to boost calories. It's, it's, it's quite low in fee and high in calories, which is good when levels are not great. Um, but you still need the calories in. My chocolate is getting a little bit thick, so I'm going to turn my heat back on um, just to make it a little bit more dippable. And by the way, if you're not into chocolate making, uh, Diane Sullivan does a beautiful job. You probably have to order from her pretty soon um, to get the candies delivered to you. Um, I will find her information and post it on Cook for Love. I know that she posted earlier in the season about it. Um, so now what I'm going to do, are, these are just some, um, some fancy Easter sprinkles. I'm just going to sprinkle some on top to make them a little bit more festive. Anybody have any questions? Okay, so that's Kit Kats from start to finish done. Um, and now we are going to check on our Twix Move this. Check on that caramel. Mm -hmm. 
So you can see here, the caramel's all blobby. Not a terribly appetizing word, sorry. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is just fold it over, fold the parchment paper over, and I'm going to take a rolling pin because I want it to be nice and thin, and I'm going to roll it out. going to do is hopefully you guys had a chance to make a few um, low protein cookies um, if you did not you can certainly use any kind that you like um, if you don't want to make them homemade I did the cook for love uh, roll out sugar cookies and I did them in two different shapes so I did a small one and then I did a bigger they're both bunnies a small bunny and um, a larger bunny so what I want to do is take those same molds and I want to cut out a caramel shape. So I'm going to put that down and I'm going to push down really hard because I need to cut through that caramel and I'm going to wiggle it a little bit and I'm going to do the same thing here. This one. And I do find that this, um, it frequently gets stuck. And what I do, if you have kitchen scissors, um, you can just kind of cut out whatever didn't work properly. So right here, if you look, his ears got a little messed up. So I'm just gonna take the scissors and I'm gonna cut. Now, of course, if we were making just a Twix bar, it would be a lot easier because it would just be cutting a, a straight strip. So. We take the cookie, so, and then we put the caramel on top, Oops. line it up, push it down so it kind of sticks on it. This guy. And all those little scraps of caramel, um, you can put them back in the warm oven to melt together again, uh, and we will use it in another recipe later when we're just kind of playing with candy. So we will use it all. So I totally, trying to get this out, um, I messed up the shape, and it's not even salvageable. So that's gonna happen. So I'm gonna put it back in there to melt again for later and try again. This cookie cutter doesn't seem to have very sharp edges. The other one was a little bit sharper. So again, I'm pulling it out. And now I'm gonna get in there and try to just gently. You know what I should have done? I should have put some powdered sugar on the candy mold on the cookie cutter. That might have made it get a little bit looser. Let's see. Caramel is out. There's the cookie. Put it on top. And it doesn't fit exactly, so I'm just going to bend it over. It's nice and soft and pliable. That's not a problem. Except that I just broke the ears. Hang on. Just dip my finger in 
some wheat starch and that wheat starch powdered sugar to hope in the hopes that it wouldn't stick quite as much. Okay. I normally don't have this hard of a time. I don't know what's happening here. I think just because I'm live on camera. Nope. Stay. <laughs> it refuses to unstick from my finger. Okay. Um, so we're going to continue with this and cut out some more shapes. And we're going to line them up. Okay. I think we might be better off just waiting for that caramel to cool a tiny bit because I did some before the class started and it's much easier to handle. do is the same thing we did before. We're going to dip them in chocolate. Okay. How are you guys handling your caramel? Is it super sticky? I guess one question I have for you guys is, how many people are cooking along and how many people are just watching to get ideas? Because that kind of gives me a hint on how fast or how slow to go. Okay. Okay. So we've got our chocolate here again. rid of some of these utensils because they're just getting in my way. I'm trying to figure out where to put them to make the least amount of a mess. So according to the survey, about two thirds of people are cooking with me and a third of you are watching. Um, so that tells me, flip flop, sorry. One third is cooking with me and two thirds are watching. Okay, so um, I hope for the people who are cooking with me, am I going too fast? Um, is the pace okay? A little fast, sorry. Um, it's, it's always a hard balance. Okay, someone just asked the question, what is the chocolate painting for? Do you mean what we did before when we were, um, when we were using the molds and we were putting them in the fridge? If that's the question, then we were just getting those sorted for when we are making our Easter cream eggs, which are going to uh, come up after uh, after we do the Twixes. So um, so now I'm, I'm taking the caramel and the cookie and I'm putting it in the chocolate. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to make sure when I flip it back, I have the caramel still there because sometimes it likes to float away. I've had that happen to me before. Um, and again, we're doing that tapping on the side get rid of the excess chocolate. Oh, and I can see, if you look here, you can see that it's not quite lined up at right anymore. So I'm gonna use my finger and line the caramel back up correctly. And then the chocolate will be the glue and it will hold it in place. 
this down. So, then turn it over, pick it up with the fork. And again, if you look at it here, you can see it's not lined up quite right. So use your fingers, get it lined up on top of each other, tap off the excess, try not to make a huge mess like I'm doing. And then you see how it's all lined up? Put it down on our parchment paper. We'll do one of the bigger ones. I'm going to go in flip side down, turn it over, and you can see here how the caramel totally separated from the cookie, but that's okay. We're going to put them back together once we pull them up. Again, tapping the excess chocolate off, scraping it on the side. A spot for it. And we're going to keep going. Oops, that cookie broke. I'm not going to use that one. And you guys get the idea. You can finish off the remaining ones when the class ends. And I'm going to put the chocolate back on. I think I'm even going to add a little more chocolate to here because I'm it's about half full now. But let me want You want to be very, very careful um, with water and the chocolate because a drop of water will cause the chocolate to seize. So just uh, be mindful of that. And seize, what I mean by seize is it gets um, hard and weird very quickly. So I'm going to finish these off um, later after the class is done just because you guys have seen what I want to do um, or what to do. I don't want the class to go on until all hours. I'm going to take this and we're going to move them over here. To set. Okay. All right. It's time for a sip of our drink. And now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a second layer of chocolate to those um, to the uh, candy molds that we put in the fridge before. white shirt. Okay. So back to our molds. And when you hold them up to the light, you can kind of see um, where you need more chocolate because it just is a little bit see-through in certain spots. But what we're going to do is add another about a half a teaspoon to each cavity. I think I'm going to abandon, abandon this mold because I don't like it. Um, and I'm going to do half s'mores and half of the Cadbury eggs in this one. So, 
Again, what we want to do is pull the chocolate because gravity is pulling it right to the center. We want to take it and spread it out. You can do a back of a spoon or a paintbrush or you can just keep rotating it too. And again, you just want to make sure it goes all the way up the sides because otherwise the filling is going to ooze out of it. So it's okay if it gets messy over here. Even if I do that with it, once it sets, it's, can, it's gonna break off. Any questions on this part? It. It's going to go back in for another five minutes at least. Okay. All right, it's going to go back in the fridge. Hang on. So you can see they're coated everywhere. When I hold them up to the light, I don't see any pieces that are see through. So that's going to go back in the fridge. And while I'm in the fridge, I'm going to take out our peppermint patty to roll that out. Okay. Um, if you guys are running low on your chocolate, now's a good time to add some more. I know I had another bag here somewhere. I just have to find it. Hang on. What did I do with it? Do, 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 do. Anybody see it? That's the colored one. Oh, there it is. You ran it somewhere. Okay. Add some more chocolates. And because we like it with a pinch of salt, I'm going to add a pinch of salt. And. Okay, so here's our peppermint patty mix, and you can see now it's much less sticky. So now we can roll it out. And again, we're going to put some wheat starch, not wheat starch, sorry, powdered sugar, because wheat starch wouldn't taste nice, and we're going to roll it out. So probably... Say probably between a quarter and an eighth of an inch thick. Okay, and now you want to take another fun shape that you like. And again, depending on the size of your cookie cutter, um, it, that's going to depend on how many you actually get. So if you use a small cookie cutter like this, you are probably going to get. I would say between 40 and 50 peppermint patties. If you use one like this, you're going to get probably about 24. So just depends. And then again, the fee is listed, protein is listed by the filling, so you can determine how much is in each one. So I'm going to put some more powdered sugar right there, and I'm going to dip my cookie cutter in it just so it doesn't stick. And we're going to cut these out and then they're either going to go in the fridge for a half hour or the freezer for 10 minutes um, and if as we're working with them and dipping them in the warm chocolate if they start to lose their shape we put them back in the freezer and you can cut these out and just have them in the freezer and dip them in chocolate at a later time because um, it's an awful lot of candy to have at, at one time. So you can save some of the filling and use it later. And again, if you don't have any cookie cutters, you can easily just form it into a traditional, pep traditional peppermint patty and just roll it like that and have it just like that. 
Does anybody have any questions on this? Or any questions in general? Because this is just kind of a, this part I don't have to really think about. Oh, good. <laughs> Someone said that their granddaughter already loves them before they even got dipped in chocolate. That's pretty impressive. Um, I have to say, I had them the other day, and genuinely, they were the best peppermint patty I ever had. I think because peppermint patties typically have, you know, Crisco and, you know, just uh, corn syrup and things like that, that, that this is butter and cream, and butter and cream is delicious. So... <laughs> And I love that you're making them. I love that someone's making them for their grandchild and that the granddaughters, they are cooking with her. That's amazing. Because let me tell you, any help you can get as a parent is amazing. Is, is, is terrific. Sorry, Nikki, I cut you off. Someone else had a question? Yes. Um, there's a chance that the chocolate might get a little bit... Um, of it won't, might not be as shiny, but it will be as delicious. So um, sometimes when you freeze chocolate, it gets uh, gets almost like a, a chalky appearance to it. Sometimes I don't really understand why because I only pretend to be a food scientist. Okay, so here are all the scraps. I'm gonna pull them all together and re-roll them. And I feel it getting stickier, so I'm not positive I'm going to be able to roll this. I'm going to have to put it back in the fridge. We'll see. Yeah, it's sticking a good bit. So I'll put it back in the fridge for a little bit and re-roll that piece. But these are going to go back in the freezer. The ones that are cut and ready to go are going to go in the freezer to set. So. Now I know that when I go to open my freezer door, when you hear a bang, it's just stuff flying out of it because I forgot to clear freezer space. <laughs> yes, I think so. Um, if not, and you wanted it to have um, a, a firmer texture, you would just add some more powdered sugar to it. But you could certainly, with the way that we did the um, uh, the cream egg, the way that we painted that, you could do that with any of the uh, smaller molds and then push this into it as well. So I'm putting this dough that is a little too sticky for me to roll out back in the fridge and I'm putting the peppermint patties, the formed ones, in the freezer. shove those in the fridge. Um, the question was, how worried do you need to be about um, the details in terms of when you're brushing that chocolate and what happens if you put might have put a little too much in? Uh, because you're going to be measuring the filling, you'll be able to figure out how much uh, exactly um, you used in terms of the, the, can the chocolate if you're worried about determining the protein of it. Um, but as long as it's covered in, you do it twice really just to make sure there's a there's a layer that's thick enough. 
um, and, and gets everywhere. There's, it's the reason why we do it twice um, and do a thinner layer two times. But it, it's really the main concern once you start adding more chocolate is the increased protein. And the main concern when you're, you're brushing them is to make sure you get it all the way up the sides so that it will seal properly. Let me know if that answered your question. Okay. All right, I'm gonna take a couple of seconds and just get rid of some things here because it's a little too messy for me to function. So if you have any questions, now's a good time. If not, um, have another sip of your drink. I'm going to be using the KitchenAid mixer again, so I'm just going to do a quick rinse of my paddle because the last time we used it, it had Biscoff on it, and that's not going to be a good flavor for our cream mix. Any questions? Okay, so as of now, we have completed the Twix and we've completed the Kit Kats. So those by now have set, so you can actually have a taste and see what you think of them. Here's our Kit Kat bar. It's pretty cool. It's pretty delicious. And I find, especially little kids, like sprinkles and things like that, that they can just kind of pick off and eat. And it adds a nice crunch. Mm, that's very good. Those of you that made them, what do you think of them? So far, people are liking the Kit Kat. Super easy to make. Um, super, super easy. So, the next thing that we're going to work on is the Easter cream eggs. So, <clears throat> I have a little too much chocolate in my mouth. I have to rinse it out with some wine. <laughs> Anything for an excuse. Um, what I'm going to do for the Easter cream egg, if you've printed out the recipe, we're going to double it. Because what I want to do is take the recipe and then put half of it to the side and half of it we're going to play with when we have um, our free time towards the end of the class where we're just going to kind of talk about all different things that we can do with whatever we have remaining. Um, so I'm going to double the recipe. You can do the same if you'd like um, or you can do a single recipe. So we're going to start with butter. And again, I'm doubling the recipe, so I'm doing a whole stick of butter. If you're doing a single recipe, you're just doing four tablespoons. And this is room temperature butter that we're going to put in the food processor. Not food processor, that KitchenAid mixer. Um, if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer, you can use regular beaters, um, a regular hand mixer. If you don't have that, you can just mix it with a fork. So you want that butter nice and soft.
water is soft and it's spreading around. And now we're going to add in, because I'm doubling the recipe, I'm doing a cup and a half of the powdered sugar. If you're not doubling the recipe, then you're just doing three quarters of a cup. And I can see a huge clump of butter that's just sitting there, not getting mixed in, so I'm going to just move it around. it's starting to come together but it's still very very dry so I'm going to scrape the sides of the bowl make sure there's no butter clumps there I give it another mix down the sides and then to this hang on mix it we're going to add uh, the heavy cream which is one tablespoon if you're done doing a uh, regular recipe two tablespoons if you're doing the double and we are going to add some vanilla so it is one and a half teaspoons if you're doing double the recipe three quarters of a teaspoon if you're doing half and then a little bit of salt. see that this is pretty thick. So what we want to do is take a scoop of it out because we want our yolk to be a little bit thicker than our egg white so that it doesn't just run into it and it's pretty distinct when we break open the cookie or break open the candy. So I'm just going to take a dollop. That's probably I would say two tablespoons, maybe three tablespoons. And now I'm going to take half of this and I'm going to put it aside. Remember I said we were going to play with some of it. That's why I did the double recipe. And even if you did a single recipe, you can still take half of it and put it to the side because this is going to make 12 um, cream eggs, which is probably more than you need. Um, so someone just mentioned that their paddle on their mixer doesn't get to the bottom. Um, you can try two things. I have, I clearly need a new paddle because mine is, mine is breaking, but mine has this uh, scraper on it if it was working properly um, and it, it helps. If that, if you don't have one like that, maybe consider getting one. But if you do have one like that um, and it's still not working, just stop every once in a while and scrape the sides of the bowl. Um, the other thing that people, some people do is they put, and, and it doesn't work with this size mixer, but the standard size, sometimes you can put um, a few coins underneath the bowl and it kind of pushes it up a little bit. And when it pushes it up, then it kind of gets, it, it does a better job. What's hard is when you're not making a lot of a mix, 
um, it, it's really hard to kind of get in there and, and, and get it to, to process. Um, if we were doing triple this, it probably would be easier for the KitchenAid to, to kind of mix it all together cohesively. So <clears throat> I'm not sure if that helps, but... Okay, so I've taken half of the mix and I've set it aside because we're going to play with that later. Excuse me. <coughs> okay. And back in here, we're going to add just a little bit of fluff. Now, fluff, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, essentially like a marshmallow. Cream. Oops. <laughs> um, right in the bowl. Um, it's a marshmallow cream. Um, and it's nice and white, and it's going to add sort of that shiny look that we want to the eggs. To the egg. Right? So, this is just um, one ounce of fluff, right? Let me just double check that it's one ounce. Do, 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 do. Yes, one ounce, 28 grams of fluff. Okay. okay, so the coin would go under here, and sometimes it helps to push, push the bowl up, and then hopefully it helps you. is not doing a great job either right now because there's just not enough batter in there. So I'm going to do it by hand. Just like this. Oops. Scraping the paddle, I'm trying to get all that cream, buttercream out. And if you look here, mine didn't do a very good job mixing either. There's a whole bunch of fluff there and cream there, so I'm just going to kind of go in by hand. Now, this is our yolk that we had set aside before we added the fluff. And you either add one drop of red and maybe three drops of yellow. I happen to have orange, so I'm just going to do that. Now, <clears throat> you can do one of two things here. Or one of three things, I suppose. Um, if you have a little Ziploc bag, you can put this, um, like a snack size bag would be ideal. Um, if you have a piping bag, you can use that as well. Um, if you don't have any of that, then you're just going to carefully put a dollop in the mold. You'll see what I'm going to do in a second. Okay. And if you're using a Ziploc bag, we're going to just push it to the corner, just like I'm going to take this and push it down to the bottom. And then you're going to just cut off a tiny bit of the tip so that you can get, you only want a dollop of the, the egg yolk and this just makes it a little bit easier to do. Okay, so now we're going to get those candy molds that we did um, earlier that we did the two coatings for. We're gonna take that out of the fridge. Okay. Switch over. We're gonna take all of my recipe. 
recipe spell. Um, we're going to take some of the filling and we're going to put half a tablespoon in to the egg mold. Three of them. And then we're going to add our yellow yolk. Okay, and then we're going to add another little bit of cream on top of it. And then that's pretty sticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some powdered sugar and put it here like that. And either using my finger or a spoon, I'm going to dip my finger in the powdered sugar and kind of pat that down. So it fills in a little bit more evenly to the mold. So you see what I'm doing. That's just patting it down. And it's still a little sticky, so I'm going to put it in the fridge for five minutes before I top it off with chocolate. Okay? I'm leaving these ones empty because my other mold was terrible. Um, actually, you know what I'll do? I can just do it right now. What I'm doing with the other one is I'm filling it. I'm going to make a s'mores. And that's just going to be some fluff and a little piece of graham cracker. Oops. Here's the fluff. A half a tablespoon of fluff. Then super sticky. Half a tablespoon. Boy, that's very sticky. Okay. cracker. We're just going to break it into four pieces and just push it down. So you want to make sure all the graham cracker fits within whatever mold you're using. And if it doesn't, just break off the sides. Okay, and that's going to go back in the fridge for five minutes, and then we can top it with chocolate. Okay. And while we're in here, let's take out our buttercups, or our not buttercups. So, 
if your peanut butter, your peanut butter egg has any little crumbs on it, just scrape them off. You're going to drop it in to the chocolate. And you're going to flip it over. And again, you're tapping to get the excess off. If at any point the egg or whatever shape you cut out starts to lose its shape, just put it back in the fridge for another few minutes. And then you guys can keep going on that. I'm going to stop and move on to the next thing because I want to make sure we have some time at the end to talk about all the different fun things that we can do with some candy. So you're going to keep going and finish those off. Let's finish off our uh, chocolate molds that just went in the fridge. And these are going to get about half a teaspoon again of chocolate on top. And this is where you just want to take a little bit of time and make sure it's sealed. Because let me tell you, if you pop them out and it breaks and it oozes out, it's very sad after all your hard work. You can use an offset spatula if you happen to have one. Um, Smooth it over if you don't want to use the back of your spoon. And at your uh, craft store, they have really pretty, um, uh, mine didn't have it this year, but normally they have very pretty like foil wrappers that you can wrap these in. I was only able to find gold ones, but normally they've got loads of different colors. It's always fun to, to open something. I'm not worried about excess chocolate um, off the side of the mold because, like I said, once we pop these out, we can break off whatever's extra. Okay, and there's the s'mores ones. Now, Molly is more, um, more of a savory person than a sweet person um, in both her taste preferences and, uh, and she's a bit salty as well, so <laughs> I suppose in her personality as well. Um, but uh, I tend to not make big candies like this. She likes the little bite-sized ones. Um, but I know if you're dealing with younger kids, um, or people who have a real sweet tooth, they're going to love this because they're going to want it to look like everybody else's. So what you do is just take this now and just kind of tap a little. So I'm lifting it up and I'm bringing it down again just to make sure it's coated everywhere and it gets into all the nooks and crannies. And that's going to go back in the fridge for a couple of minutes. And while we're there, we're going to take out our peppermint patties. And same thing that we've done for all of them. 
and we're only going to do a handful of them because I do want to move on because the, this part you guys can do on your own time. Um, I want to talk more about ideas on what to do with other kinds of candies. Um, and we can talk about your favorite candy bars. So I had no room in my freezer. Um, and this chocolate is warm, so they're not holding their shape as well as they should. So I'm only going to do two. And what you can do here is you can, again, you can always put sprinkles on it. And when it sets, you can drizzle it with an extra layer of chocolate or a different color chocolate to make it look prettier. Um, but you're going to keep going on those um, later on, as, as will I. Um, those are the peppermint patties. Okay, so we have made Twix bars um, or Twix treats. We have made Easter cream eggs. We've made s'mores eggs. Uh, we did peanut butter eggs. Um, so now I just kind of want to talk about all the different things that we can do with what we have remaining. Um, if you have little molds, and I bought a, a bunch of different ones at uh, Joann's, I think was where I was. These are little uh, Easter egg ones. Um, these are little bunny rabbits. And these are little bunny butts. <laughs> uh, what you can do is you can fill chocolate in these and think about what your favorite candy bar is. Um, you know, if you like a fruit and nut bar, you can do craisins or raisins, uh, depending on, on what your preference is and what your tolerance is. Hang on, I just need to find my cutting board. Um, and to replace the nuts, you're going to do chopped up chocolate. I uh, didn't chopped up chocolate. Chopped up pretzels, gluten-free pretzels. For whatever reason, my, um, my store didn't have Snyder's gluten-free pretzels. Um, the two stores I went to didn't have them. So I happened to have the Snack Factory ones, but I would normally use uh, Snyder's. So what you want to do is a rough chop of pretzels. They're going everywhere right now. My dogs are going to be very, very happy. Okay. Pretzels, and we're going to do some chocolate all over my hands. We're going to do some craisins or dried cranberries. Similar to what we did before, you're going to put a little bit of chocolate in the mold first. Okay. Chocolate in each one. And you can fill these with, if you want uh, like a, uh, a Nestle Crunch, you do a little bit of Rice Krispie Treats. Um, you could do, um, one of my favorite candy bars is, uh, I think it's Chocopology is the, the brand, but it's um, it has sea salt, it has um, toffee bits and pretzels. So I normally in my, grocery store can get Heath Bar Bits, um, which are in How Much Fee, but again, they didn't have them for this class, so I wasn't able to get them. So I'm doing the same thing I did before, which is just giving a coating. So if we just put chocolate in and didn't let it set, what would happen is the, um, the pretzels and whatever other bits we put in there um, would sink to the bottom before the chocolate set, and then they would just wouldn't look as pretty. It would still taste delicious, but they wouldn't look as pretty. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the big candy in terms of just a little bit of the filling, a little bit of chocolate up all the side of it, and then we're going to add the fillings and more chocolate once it sets. 
Um, what you could do, so we, we set aside a few things, and that's what I want to talk about. Um, I think I mentioned earlier, my favorite candy bar in the world is an Irish candy bar called a Star Bar. And it is pretty much um, peanut butter, and it has peanuts in it, and it has uh, caramel and, um, and chocolate. It's, it's really pretty delicious. It's one of the only things that I genuinely will not share with anybody because um, I don't get them often and they're they're really good and they just remind me of my childhood. So let's see. Those set. Okay, I'm gonna put those in the fridge for a second. <clears throat> The half of the Biscoff that we saved, the Biscoff butter, I'm going to add, I can't add nuts to it, so I'm going to add Rice Krispie Treats. It's not very dry. Um, to make it a little bit crunchy. Okay. And I'm going to use this filling. it in and it's dry but that's okay more in there and this is just rice crispy treats that I chopped up a little bit I mix those in and then I'm going to squeeze it together a little bit with my hand And I'm going to put that in one of my molds when they come out with a little bit of caramel. And then hopefully it will taste just like a Star Bar. Um, you can take the buttercream that we made. Remember how we set some of that apart? And you can do a whole bunch of different things. You could add uh, coconut to it um, and mix that together and fill that with the candy, uh, with the chocolate mold that we just did. Um, you can do uh, strawberry buttercream, which you would just take um, freeze-dried strawberries and put them in a blender uh, and add that to our buttercream that we made before. Um, if we have adults on here, we could use, also do some boozy options. So you could do a little bit of Kahlua with some espresso powder in there. Um, you could do Malibu rum with some freeze-dried pineapple and coconut. Uh, you could do a vegan Bailey's with almond extract. You could do a rum and salted caramel. Um, when you go to the store, sometimes you can find things like this is a Stonewall Kitchen sea salt caramel sauce. So this is a much thinner caramel than the, the chewy ones and the cocoa melts. So you could use that as a filling. Um, it is, you know, you're going to have to estimate the, the fee. The second ingredient is heavy cream. The first is sugar. So I, I would probably look at it and say, let's, let's go with half of the protein that's normally in heavy cream and, and take a rough, a rough amount from there because you're only going to be adding a quarter of a teaspoon to your candies. Um, you can do, again, we talked about Rice Krispie Treats. We talked about uh, cranberries and crushed pretzels as options. Um, Chocolate-covered pretzels are delicious uh, on their own, and you can also just make them a little fancy by putting some sprinkles on them. Uh, Almond Joy bars, you could do condensed coconut milk with uh, coconut flakes. You can dip your peeps uh, in chocolate and put them on one of the Snyder gluten-free pretzel rods and put sprinkles on that. Um, you know, there's, there's a million different things that you can do. You know, you just kind of look around your pantry and, and kind of see what would be good dipped in chocolate. And the answer is usually everything, uh, <laughs> in my opinion. And, you know, you can do your regular coconut. I happen to love coconut chips. It's a little bit more of a sophisticated taste. It's a little bit crunchier, um, but they're delicious in the chocolate. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. What are your favorite candy bars, I guess? And let's let's go from there and figure out what we could do to make them lower in protein. Does anybody have any? Not so far, okay. So let's uh, pop our candy out of the mold. 
or uh, Cadbury cream eggs. Okay, just clean this up a little bit. So when you look at it, it's not so gross. Let's see. I'll make sure my hands are dry because I just washed them. Right. And let's flip the angle of the camera. So, we just turn these over. And some of them pop out on their own. Others you just have to put a little bit of pressure. Okay. And you can see here, I told you before not to worry that this is all around here. And that all we need to do is take a little knife and carve off that excess. So I'm just gonna hold it like that. Go around. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Any candies I missed? Okay, so people said $100,000 bars. Whoever said that, what's in those? I don't even remember. Um, I'm not really sure what's in those. Can you, whoever, whoever suggested those, tell me what's in them and let's see if we can figure out what to put in it. Um, for uh, mounds, we, we already talked about an Almond Joy, right? It would just be, um, I think, condensed sweetened coconut milk with some uh, chopped up coconut flakes. Um, or you could just do the, the buttercream that we already made and add coconut to that. And then Almond Joy has nuts, mounds don't. So we can't do nuts, but you could do... Um, a pretzel piece in the top, which would give you that same salty crunch, which is really kind of what you're looking for. That's how I would do that one. Um, uh, Snickers. I have to look up how to make a nougat. Um, I'm not sure about that one. I know that I would substitute um, pretzels for the nuts, and I would use the, the cocomels for the caramel. Or I wanted a gooier, I would do the, the stone wall. This, this caramel, um, but I would have to look up how to make a nougat. I don't know that off the top of my head. I think that that would involve probably cooking um, in terms of candy, re reaching a certain temperature. Um, but I will look that up and get back to you on that one. Um, did we find out what's in the... Uh-huh. Okay, so, uh, I'm sorry, what was the name of the candy bar again? Okay, so the 100 grand bar sounds like it is um, Rice Krispies and caramel and what else? Okay, so I would probably do, um, if I just wanted to taste of that sort of taste in one of our little molds here, um, I would do uh, the Rice Krispie treats like that. Well, not Rice Krispies, Rice, Rice Krispies. And I would add a little bit of caramel, which we have where? Now we have caramel somewhere. Oops. I would add a small piece of caramel. All right, so I would just fold it like that. I cut off a little piece. And I put it in like that, and then I would fill it the rest of it with chocolate. Um, and what were our other ones? Are there other ones, or is that it? So far. Okay, so I'm taking these, and we did, to make something similar to a payday bar, we did a little bit of Rice Krispie Treat, and we're going to do a little bit of caramel. Filling in some of them. 
And I'm just taking the caramel and I'm just kind of folding it over. So it's a little bit in there. Um, I'm gonna do some that are just Rice Krispie treats. And I'm gonna do some that are the pretzels and some cranberries, dried cranberries. And I'm gonna do some that are, let's see what else can we do? What else do we have here? I wanted to do, where is my star bar? Do, 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 do. Hang on one second, I gotta find it. Oh, here it is. So, the star bar filling, which was the Biscoff that we added the Rice Krispie Treats to, that also normally has a little bit of caramel. So again, I'm just taking the caramel, I'm cutting it. I rolled it thin, I'm cutting it with a pizza cutter. And I just want a little bit of this Biscoff mix. And we put the Rice Krispie Treats in. So. I heard we had a sneaky taste tester who came in and swiped a Kit Kat and loved it. Good. I'm glad she liked it. And I would love for all, everyone to, we have enough candy here, certainly, to try some. So here I took the um, mix that I had with the Biscoff and the Rice Krispie Treat. And here I have a strip of caramel and I'm just going to wrap it. And I'm going to put that into one of these molds and just push it down. And that will hopefully taste just like a star bar. And then we're going to top it with chocolate and let those set. Um, do we have any adults on who are making candy for themselves? Push that in. Again, a little caramel, a little of that, and we're pushing it into the mold, flattening it out. these ones that we have here. Adding some more chocolate to it. Okay. So these little bite-sized ones are much more um, my speed and Molly's speed. Um, so we'll do, I'll play with all these fillings and make a whole bunch of different ones for her. And because she turned 21, I'll probably make some boozy ones. Probably. We'll see. Okay. So you can do some uh, boozy ones for you, Diane. No, we can't have them yet. <laughs> But because you have the buttercream made, it's very easy just to add the different flavors to it. And just in a little bowl, put aside what you want. I would not win any prizes for neatness. Just should not be a shock to anyone who's ever seen me. I'm so glad that you guys were able to join me for this. Um, we really had a, a nice turnout, which is which is very cool. Um, and if these are programs that you like, you know, just make sure you let us know. So we, you know, we're really genuinely here to serve you, and um, you give us feedback on what you like, and that's what we'll focus on doing more of. Um, and I am really hoping to see some of you in person at the uh, camp in Oregon. Um, in the beginning of June, uh, that family camp. If you have not, if you, if there's any chance of you going, go. It's the most amazing experience. Um, 
you know, you can get a cabin, you can have extended family with you. Um, there are low protein foods provided. Um, you can bring family and friends, which is nice. And then there's a whole bunch of just different activities and uh, there's, there's lectures on research and it, there's a lot of, it's at an amazing campground that has a, this beautiful water park and it's, it's genuinely one of the coolest things ever. So if you can make it, we would love to see you there. Um, I'm coming in from New York, so, uh, and Sarah's going to be there and, and Nikki's going to be there and Michael's going to be there. Really the whole, the whole team will be there. So it will really, Jen is going to be there. Um, and it'd be nice just to, to hang out and have a glass of wine in person. Um, and eat lots of good food and and just meet people in person. I think it does make a difference. Um, so, hopefully you can join us. Um, now let's talk about some of these candies. Go back to them. So let me switch. Um, they should, let me double check that. Um, I think, because it's two weeks away, I think I'd store it in the fridge. So this is the um, Cadbury egg that we made. So, I mean, how cool is that? Uh, it's, it's really very, very sweet um, and delicious. Um, that's really good. Okay. Um, any other? Hang on one second. Oh my God, it's really, really good. Um, any questions? How messy is your kitchen? I think that we should all post how bad our kitchens look and see who can win the messiest the messiest kitchen contest. I usually always win that. Um, but anybody have any questions? Any feedback? Um, oh, my AirPods are going. Nikki, if you can hear me, I can't hear you. My AirPods just died. Um, so I'll give them a second to charge. Um, hopefully Nikki can hear me on camera and uh, I will put these back on as soon as they charge up a bit um, and we can answer the remaining questions. Bad time for that to go get out. Hang on. Um, you have to try the, the peanut buttercup. That's, that to me was one of the most incredible surprises because it was just so tasty. Um, and not terribly sweet. Let me see. My phone. Yep. Missed call. I have a feeling that's what's it. Hello. Are we back on? Yep. Hello? I can't hear you. Hang on. Okay, my, my ear pods are, are dying. Um, I just charged them up for a couple of seconds. So uh, if you have any questions, answer them quickly and Nikki can feed them into my ear. <laughs> but otherwise, uh, I think we're probably going to be wrapping up. <laughs> any other questions? Excellent, excellent. And again, with the buttercream we have, <clears throat> excuse me, the buttercream that you have left, the uh, freeze-dried strawberries in there, and then it's a lovely pink uh, strawberry-flavored cream. Um, you can do coconut in there. Uh, you can do, uh, again, the boozy ones with some Kahlua and espresso powder. Um, you could add some Baileys. You could add some rum and freeze-dried uh, pineapples. All different fillings. So you could just put them in little bowls and just add different things to it and then fill up your little molds with it. Um, so if, uh, Nikki, if you mind just doing a quick poll and see what candy was everybody's favorite out of the ones we made. Um, the peanut butter eggs, the peppermint patties, the Easter cream eggs, the s'more eggs, the Twix treats, and the Kit Kats. I think those were the, I think that's what we made, right? Was that everything? I think so. Um, And uh, I will look into Snickers, and if there's any other candy bars that I that I missed that are your favorites, you know, uh, drop me a, a note, and we can see what we can figure out. All right, we're just doing a poll to see what everyone's favorite was. Um, 
Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate your time. And I hope to see you again, uh, like I said, in, in, in person at either the PKU camp or the NPKUA conference. Um, if you would like to support Cook for Love um, and PKU News, we're always happy to uh, get donations. Um, it helps keep programs like this going. Um, if you want to buy uh, merchandise, we have these lovely uh, aprons that are for sale. Great Mother's Day gift. Um, and I think that's about it. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Michael, for, for being in my ears and providing the technical support. And uh, thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Have another glass of wine. And uh, hopefully you can order in dinner tonight. And someone else will clean the kitchen. Take care. All right. That's a wrap. I'm going to press, I think, this button to stop.